Want to speak real English from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at EnglishClass101.com. Hi, everybody. My name is Alicia. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about some education related expressions. I've broken this lesson into two parts. I'm going to introduce some past tense expressions you can use to talk about education that's finished and some future tense and present tense expressions you can use to talk about your education plans and continuing education. So let's get started. I want to begin this lesson with past tense expressions. So these are things you can use to explain your education, education that has finished, you're done, it's complete. We use this expression to talk about high school and college or university level education that's done. The pattern is, I graduated from high school or university or college in a year. So for example, I graduated from high school in 2000. I graduated from college in 2006, for example. So the difference between university and college, in general, there's not a difference in American English, we tend to use college a little bit more, but both are okay to use. You might hear British English speakers use university a little bit more often than college. Um, so we only use these for high school and for university level education. We do not use these, uh, or this pattern rather, for education lower than high school. So please keep this in mind. Here we'll also see in past tense, we're using the verb graduate. In past tense, it's graduated, graduated. Don't forget this from. I graduated from high school. I graduated from university. You can also, instead of saying university, you can include the name of your university. So I graduated from ABC University in year, or I graduated from ABC College in year, if you want to be very specific. So this expresses the completion point of your higher education, usually. When you want to explain your studies, you can use a couple of these patterns. Um, it depends on what you'd like to emphasize. We have these two expressions. Major, I've used it as a, a verb here, to major in something and to minor in something. Uh, let's look at this verb form first. To major in something is to make something, make a subject, your main focus of study, your major focus of study. So this is like the number one thing you're studying at university usually. So we use major and minor to talk about your university studies. We don't use these in high school because generally in high school education, we're learning lots of just general information and it's not so focused. We don't choose something necessarily in high school. So we use these to talk about our major and our minor studies. So in US universities, we commonly have the ability to choose a major, as I explained, your main focus of study, and your minor. So your minor is like your secondary focus of study. So maybe you want to have like a sub-specialization, another small specialization. So you have a main specialization, a main focus, and then this other kind of smaller focus. Um, so as I've said, we can use these as verbs or as nouns. I've used major as a verb here. I majored in subject is the pattern we use with a verb here. If you want to use it as a noun, we'll use it uh, with the verb is, in this case past tense. My minor was subject. So we could change these to use either form. For example, my major was subject. I minored in subject. So. Either pattern is fine, they mean the same thing. When I say subject here, it's usually like a broad topic. So for example, I majored in English, I majored in chemistry, my minor was business communication. So it's usually something that's kind of a big topic that's easy for lots of people to quickly understand. Then, if you want to talk about your degree, specifically the degree that you received when you graduated or when you finished your coursework, you can use one of these expressions. So we're using this have to mean this is something, a degree that you currently own, you currently possess this thing. So after four years of study in most US universities, uh, in a lot of universities around the world actually, 
we receive a bachelor's degree. So that's commonly um, called like a BA for like Bachelor of Arts or BS, Bachelor of Science. So I have a bachelor's degree in subject. I've got degree in parentheses here because sometimes people choose to drop the word degree because we understand this word bachelor's means degree. I have a bachelor's in I don't know, um, English language, for example. So I have a bachelor's in mathematics. I have a bachelor's in engineering, whatever your subject is. The next level here is master's, master's. So master's is part of graduate school programs. So after you complete a bachelor's degree, after finishing four years of study, you can choose to continue to the next level of study. Master's degree programs are usually about two years. So studying another topic in depth, like a very specific topic for two more years and completing coursework um, will get you, hopefully, a master's degree. So a master's degree in subject. I have a master's degree in architecture. Finally, if you choose to continue studying, you can get a PhD, a PhD. So a PhD is the highest level of education we do not use degree with this expression. I have a PhD in medicine. I have a PhD in communications, whatever your subject is. PhDs are done after master's degrees and they usually require another three years depending on your course of study. So bachelor's degree, master's degree, PhD. Those are the three types of degree we talk about. Okay, though, if you have some other type of certification, some other kind of qualification that did not come from a university or it's not a degree, this is a sentence you might use to express that. Here we use the same have. We'll use this word, I have a certification in skill. So certifications commonly are for a specific skill, something you are able to do. Um, it could, in some cases, perhaps be a subject, um, but we often see certifications for a specific type of skill. So we'll use certification, which a certification is a document or it's some kind of recognition that you have achieved a level of mastery in this skill. So you can say, I have a certification in skill and finish the sentence there, that's okay. Or I have a certification in skill from a school or some other organization. Another good keyword to know for something like this, and maybe um, for other things here too, is this word, vocational school, vocational school. So the root of vocational is this word, vocation. So vocation means job or profession. So a vocational school is kind of like a university or a college, but it's a type of school students attend to learn like a specific skill. So maybe there's like an electrician's vocational school or like some kind of construction vocational school or maybe like a computer or computer related vocational school. So um, some people choose instead of going to a like large university or a large college, they choose to focus on one skill and they attend a vocational school. This is the word you can use to describe that. So, for example, I have a certification in English teaching from ABC Vocational School, for example. Or I have a certification in first aid from ABC Organization. So you can talk about many different skills with something like this. So these are all kind of past tense ways to talk about your education, the things that you have achieved. So things that are complete in other words. So with this in mind, I want to continue on to some present tense and future tense expressions. Here, you'll notice I'm going to use the progressive tense for a couple of these to talk about uh, future and ongoing education related topics. First, let's look at this. I'm graduating from in year. So this is for students who are currently in school. You are in school now. This could be high school. It could be university or college. It could perhaps be a vocational school as well. I'm using the progressive tense here because we can use the progressive tense to talk about an action in the future that we have a high level of certainty of. 
So for example, if you know you're going to graduate in the year 2023, you can say, I'm graduating in 2023. Here I have from in parentheses. I had it over here, from, with high school or from university or college. I've included this here because you can say, if you like, I'm graduating from high school in 2023, or I'm graduating from university in 2023. You can say that. Uh, I included it in parentheses here because many times when you're speaking with someone, they can guess which level of education you are based on your appearance. If you are a high school student, perhaps it's easy to see that you're studying in high school right now. So you can choose to say this if you like. I'm graduating from high school in 2023 if you want to be specific. Um, you could change this if you like. I'm going to graduate in 2023. That's fine as well. Um, this is just the one that I chose for this lesson. You cannot say, however, I will graduate in 2023. Or if you do, it's going to sound a little less natural than I'm going to. So I'm graduating or I'm going to graduate in 2023 sounds the best. I recommend that pattern. Okay, so let's compare this or rather let's add to this the present tense expressions for your focuses of study. So over here, we looked at how to express your completed education. I explained we can use major and minor as verbs and as nouns. So here, I talked about using in and was for past tense expressions. We can keep um, the same idea here and just make it a present tense statement. So if you are a student in university or a student in college now, you can say, my major is art, my major is mathematics, my major is biochemistry. You can use my minor is the same idea. Um, if you want to use these as verbs, you can say, for example, I'm majoring in. I'm majoring in. This is another thing that you can say if you like. I'm majoring in subject. I feel, however, uh, that at least when I was a student, I tended to use this pattern more. I tended to use it more as a noun uh, than a verb. And then I'll actually use it in verb form more for past tense expressions. That's my personal preference, I think. Both are correct. Those are both fine to use. I think I would probably use this form a little more often. Okay. Then if you want to be very specific about your degree, which degree you're currently studying for, you can use something like this. I'm studying for my bachelor's in subject. I'm studying for my master's in subject. I'm studying for my PhD in subject. So again, we're using these same uh, degree related vocabulary words. And again, you can choose to include degree after bachelor's or master's in this expression. I'm studying for my bachelor's degree in subject. I'm studying for my master's degree in subject is okay. Uh, I'm studying for, so this progressive tense shows that this is something that is ongoing for us. For shows us the purpose. I'm studying for my master's degree. So don't use to here. I'm studying for. It shows us the purpose, the aim. Okay. Then I want to include a couple more points down here um, for maybe depending on your situation, you might have something a little bit different from maybe typical studies. So if you are researching something, like it's perhaps a little bit in an education setting, maybe a little bit in like a business setting, depending on your, your situation, you can use this I'm researching pattern. I'm researching plus a topic. So some people choose to remain in a university setting um, to do their research. So you can still use this even if you're not a student. Like I'm researching communications in the USA or I'm researching uh, data use on the internet. So again, we use this ING, the progressive form, to show that it's continuing. This is something that's going on now. I'm researching topic. Finally, 
These last two example sentences are for people who perhaps are thinking about their studies. So if you are a high school student or if you are a junior high school student maybe, you can use expressions like these. I want to study subject. I want to study subject. I want to study English. I want to study mathematics. I want to study science. I want to study chemistry. So you can talk about the things you are interested in and maybe after high school, the kinds of things you want to learn more about. One more example, I'm interested in subject. So I'm interested in art history. I'm interested in music. I'm interested in whatever it is that you're interested in. So you can use these two to talk about maybe what you would like to study in the future when you get to university or to college. What do you want to do? So I'm interested in subject. I want to study subject. So use these two kind of future, uh, future forward thinking ideas to talk about um, your goals for your studies in the future. Okay, so I want to finish today's lesson by looking at the specific words that we use for school years. So in high schools and in universities throughout the US, we typically have four years that are required for schooling. And for every year of schooling, we have a specific word for the students in that year. So first year students, second year students, third and fourth, each have a specific word we use. So. The word we use for first year students in high school and in university is freshman, freshman. You'll notice this word ends in man, yes, but we use this to talk about male and female students. So all first year students are called freshmen. In the plural form, freshmen. Singular form is freshman. I'm a freshman. They are freshmen. So freshman, freshman. Second year students are called sophomore students, sophomore. The pronunciation here is sophomore. So in the plural form, we say sophomores, sophomores, a group of sophomores, or I'm a sophomore. Third year students are called junior, junior students. I'm a junior student, they are juniors. Junior students are third year students. Fourth year students are called senior students. He's a senior, she's a senior, they are seniors. So these are the four words you'll hear quite commonly to talk about our, your age or your level of schooling in high school or in university. So you can use these too. Um, it'll sound quite natural to use these actually. Of course, if you prefer, you can use first, second, third, fourth year, that's fine as well but this is something that you can use a little bit in your day-to-day -day life, especially if you're studying abroad. This will sound quite natural. Okay, so with that, that's a quick introduction to some education-related expressions that you can use. I hope that this was helpful for you, and I hope that you found something that you can use to talk about your education. But if you have any questions, or if there's something else you would like to know how to say to explain your education, please feel free to leave a comment and we will check it out. Of course, if you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel if you have not already, and check us out at EnglishClass101.com for some other things that can help you with your English studies. Thanks very much for watching this lesson and I will see you again soon. Bye bye. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.